I'm Rob and this is another results tutorial. Hello and welcome back loyal subjects of the Grand Empire. Today we are putting our red paints to use as we get Palpatine's special boys ready for the tabletop from Fantasy Flight Games, Star Wars Legion, Imperial Guards. This should be a straightforward build as we are just using a couple secondary colors with red being the primary. From there it is just a matter of layering and minor highlighting. I should mention that by priming our mini in a lighter color such as gray will save us a lot of time and headache later as red does not face very well on very dark colors. Starting off with flat red and warlord purple for the pants doing about a 2 to 1 ratio and remember as always thin your paints down for better control and quicker drying times. Uh, want to learn how to win a $25 Amazon gift card? Stick around to the end for details. For a good base coat on all the red areas we want to use a dark color such as heavy red uh, this is from Vallejo's Extra Opaque line of paints and does a great job of base coating, but does tend to dry a little matte. This can be both good and bad all at the same time, just depending on what you are trying to achieve. We will cover all the areas we want red, including the helmet, the boots, and the cloak. Continuing with our reds, adding some flat red into our heavy red, and this should be considered our base color, so go ahead and cover a majority of the previous color, color leaving just the deepest recesses of the folds. Flat red seems to be a good neutral red, as it is not too bright and not too dark. Quick note, since we mixed heavy red in this, it will still dry a little matte, so do not be too alarmed. Continuing to work our way up, and for our first highlight, we're going to be using a scarlet red mixed with flat red. Use this to cover all the outside folds of the cloak, as well as the majority of the boots and the helmet. Do leave some of the recesses in the previous colors. Now using straight scarlet, focusing more on the upper ends of the folds, on the cloaks, the outer edges of the boots, and the major areas of the helmet. If you're wondering why we added flat red instead of going straight to scarlet red from heavy, well, when you're trying to create smooth transitions from a dark to light, one should avoid larger jumps in colors. This way the blends seem more natural and do not have large amounts of contrast. You can get away with these jumps when you're painting metal or machines as they have sharper edges, but so mu not so much in people and clothing. Mindful viewers will notice that I have painted both the visor and the staff in black to get that area ready for the metallics in the next step. But for now, we're going to work on the gloves, and for that, we want a dark brown, such as charred brown. This color will make for a nice dark leather later, and 
I feel it helps the model pop out. Uh, don't worry if you spill over onto the staff as the metallic will cover it without issue. Uh, but do try and be mindful of the reds. Now for the staff, I really could not decide whether I wanted to use silver, steel, or aluminum. But after much debate and several contentious Senate votes, the voices said to use aluminum as it seems slightly shinier than the other two colors. Uh, try your best not to get this onto the red areas as it is not easily fixed, as say a non-metallic color might be. Just remember to breathe and use your tongue when you're going around those edges next to the cloak. So the box art, box art shows this staff having two little black strips on it, um, on the staff, one on the top, one on the bottom. Uh, you're going to probably want to use a smaller brush here to lessen your chances of spilling onto the cloak area. And also if you forgot to do the visor, this would be a great time to get that done. If you color up too much of the, too much of the metallic, don't worry about it, just clean your brush off, give the black a second to set, and then go back over it with the aluminum. Now on each end of the staff there appears to be some yellow gold areas, so for that, we will use some, you might have guessed it here, some yellow gold. Remember that yellow tends to be a pretty transparent color and can frustrate people when they're trying to cover up other colors here. So this will take several passes. I think I probably did four, maybe five layers of this yellow to get a good uh, color down. Uh, you could also alternatively just put down some, like some thin white gray or something here. Just be careful when doing that because these are small areas and you don't want to lose details. Now for the shading, and we're going to want our shade to be a little on the lighter side here, so just remember to thin this down. You could also add in a little bit of red shade to help the reds blend together better. Myself, I used Known Oil thinned down with some medium and added a little bit of Flow Improver to help it flow easier into the recesses and not sit on the tops. Uh, you want to do some really targeted shading here, meaning just shade the areas we want shaded. By doing this, it's going to save us a lot of time later, as we will not be required to do a real highlight of areas. If you do get shade in areas where it's not unwel where it's unwelcome, just clean your brush off, get a little bit of water on it, and wipe those areas up as quickly as you can.
So after letting my miniatures sit for about 20 minutes, I'm taking some charred brown and mixing in a dab of something light, yet not something bright, but not something too bright. So something, say, like a white gray. This might look white when it's wet, but it actually dries a lot darker. Uh, so for this, we just want to pick out the knuckles, the fingers, and the folds of the gloves. If you're feeling like this is a little bit too bright, don't worry, just add a little bit of more charred brown to the mix and go back over this a second time. So back to the reds and still using some scarlet red, but this time we're going to be adding in a light red to it. Remember for smoother transitions, thin this down and layer it up where you want it to be brighter, taking care not to cover too much of the previous areas and in all the shading that we've already done. So here we're going to be aiming for the higher ends of the, f the higher end of the folds in the cloak and any areas where the cloth goes over an arm or a leg, the outer areas of the boots, the tops of the helmet, and also where the cloak and the helmet meet around the shoulders. And now for the final pickups on the cloak, helmet, and boots, this time using just straight light red. And as before, you know, aim for the highest points, the things that you feel like need to be highlighted. Just don't put too much of this on here. It'll start to look funny if you do. It'll kind of look like it's going into that orange spectrum if you put too much on there. Going back to the pants with some Warlord Purple again, but this time we're going to add in a little bit of our light red so that we can bring the, close, the color closer to the cloak, but not quite that color. Uh, as always, hit the higher areas, avoid the shadows. So I felt like my pants needed an additional highlight, so for that I added in basically a brush tip of something white. You know, just 
any anything white. Uh, but you've got to be careful because if you add too much white, you'll swing this color too far into the wrong spectrum, and you'll have to ditch it and start all over again. Just aim for the tops of the folds, and you're done. And then after giving this miniature a minute to dry, putting the guards on our steel colored bases and hitting them with a matte varnish. This will not only protect your miniatures, but it will also actually help all your colors blend together as it makes everything on the miniature matte at the exact same time. And then you are ready to pound out some rebel scums. Here we are guys, the Imperial Guards from Fantasy Flight Games, Star Wars Legion. These are some of the simpler units to paint. Just remember to base them in gray or even red if you feel like it. And then taking your time building up layers and doing some small highlights. I hope you have enjoyed this video and that you join me next time as we paint Boromir of Gondor from Games Workshop's Middle Earth. So during the month of August, everyone who is already subscribed or subscribes to my channel and then leaves a comment below this video will have a chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card. Good for your next hobby adventure. Below you will also find affiliate links to the paints I used. This is a great way to help my channel by shopping for some much needed supplies and does not cost you any extra. You could also head over to Patreon.com and sign up for chances to win miniatures featured in my videos. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. See you next time.